problem in society in some way, that we have to learn to deal with this and find some new way of relating to each other. Certainly, not just transport, means of transport have changed the world, but certainly in the last, and that's very recent, maybe 10 years, maximum 20 years, mainly in the last 20 years, the um, IT revolution certainly has even made this world much smaller. We are all connected, worldwide, billions of people. We are all connected through one single medium, and that's the internet. Which one of you is not at least on one of those social networks? Who is on Facebook or NetLog or something similar? Who is on? No? No, no networks? No. 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 Very principal. Well, it would have been much more than more people, but all of you were, are searching on the internet, no doubt. All of you are using things like Google and whatever search robots you have and are using Wikipedia as a source of information, etc., etc. Do you still know where that comes from? Who is organizing? Who is behind that? Where are the people that work for things like Wikipedia or, or Facebook or whatever? Probably don't have a clue. It could very well be some uh, Japanese uh, boy in a small room somewhere in the middle of uh, uh, Tokyo or something, or it could very well be your neighbor. You don't even know anymore. So it really has become a very, very small world. <coughs> From a professional level, and that's why we're here, of course, a lot of things have changed because we have, since the 50s, what is called the European Union today. This has certainly very much influenced our lives as well. In the first place, of course, now that we have the European Works Council since 1994, but this also is an evolution, an intercultural exchange that has become increasingly important since the creation of, originally it was the European Economic Community in the 50s, a collaboration of six countries who were friends, uh, more or less, who had relations with each other, the Benelux, Bene Belgium, the Netherlands, Luxembourg, France, Italy and West Germany in that time. Those were the founding fathers of what is today the European Union. Who would have thought back then, it's not so long ago, once more, who would have thought then that today in that same European Union we would have people from Bulgaria, we would have Lithuania as a member state, we might have very soon Macedonia or uh, maybe even Turkey, who knows? This is an evolution that seems to be unstoppable, but it requires good reflection on how to deal with this. And we have to be aware, first thing is that we have to be aware of how different things indeed are, how different people are, how different they think, how different they behave, depending on the different corners of Europe. And we're only talking about Europe, where they come from. We're only talking about Europe. This morning in the hotel, when I had breakfast, I was surrounded by Japanese. It was a Japanese invasion. Mm. All the things I'm going to say today, you know, that's all simple, in fact. And it's all very well possible to overcome, because we all are Europeans in the end. And our cultures, be it very different, are very similar when you compare them, European mentality, to an Asian culture, or an African culture, or, for that matter, American uh, culture. So it's not all that impossible to overcome. But, first thing, once more, is... We have to be aware of all those differences. Because, well, in the end, the idea is that indeed we are one European representative body. People come together from different sides of Europe, all working for, in the end, the same employer, the same company. And the objective probably is from everyone, wherever they come from, whatever their background is, to defend the interests of the workers to the best possible way. But are we so united? Are we just individuals, islands that come together once a year, exchange some ideas maybe, listen to some presentations from management? Individual islands, sometimes little groups of islands, people who come from the same country or who in some other, some other reason <coughs> connect together? Or can we really be, which is the final goal, one body of representatives? One united group, a European works, a true European works council. It's not easy, as you probably all know, because there are so many, many differences that separate us. And I've only tried to, you know, 
thinking about that, I've identified at least 11 of those heterogene heterogeneities that you might find in European works styles. Some of those we are confronted with at national level as well. But they just are stronger, or more explicit, and more diverse even at European level. So I'm going to run through some of those elements that I identify. It's about, of course, obviously, national heterogeneity. Come from different countries, obviously. We are also, in some house, in some way, over the national borders related to each other in cultural groups. And for that matter, it's not such a surprise that, although you, from what I've heard, were allowed to invite some colleague of your European Works Council from another country, you have all somehow chosen to take somebody on board who is from your same culture, very closely, who speaks German to begin with. So obviously, you look at Germany, Austria, the Netherlands, Switzerland, that is represented. You could have taken a Belgian on board also. German is a third national language in Belgium, so you are supposed to uh, speak some German at least, or Luxembourg for that matter. So, cultural groups are also represented inside the European Works Council. A lot of elements are still, and that's where I say you find these differences also at national level. A lot of differences are just simply on an individual basis. You are individually different people, different expectations, have a different background as well. Whether or not we belong to the same country or the same culture. A lot of people probably are a member of a trade union when they come to a European Works Council. And sometimes, well, you might expect that coming from a particular country, you will meet with trade unionists from another country who are member of a similar trade union. The same kind of trade union, which automatically would establish some kind of a relation. Not so, as we're going to see, even at trade union level, there can be huge differences. There is a huge heterogeneity between the different trade unions that you will find in, your, in the European Union. The expectations that you might have, again, something personal in some way, but also related to what you're used to at home. You may find, I mean, coming from a, let's say, a Catholic trade union, you have Catholic trade unions in, in Europe. You may find somebody from another country who also belongs to a Catholic trade union and still not be able to understand each other because you have different expectations about how you relate to management, for instance. What a European Works Council should do or cannot do. Those expectations can again create some kind of a problem in trying to find some way to move forward together. The most obvious difference also, not just the nationality, that's what we have on our passport, but also the language we speak. Again, the fact that I am speaking English here shows that this is certainly one of those problems that we need to overcome. So we're going to look at that as well. Not just the words we use, not just the language we use, but also the way we construct our thinking, the way we construct our phrases when we speak to each other, can cause a problem. Again there, I'll try to explain you a bit more about that. The concept of time. I've seen this morning that you were rather punctual. <laughs> Actually very unusual for a Germanic group. You usually are really very punctual. There too, the expectations with regard to what is being on time can be very different depending on what region from Europe people come from. A word on that. The way we behave, the way I'm standing here, whether, we, whether or not we look at each other, all those small elements also are external signs of differences that we have heterogeneity as you can find in European works class. What one finds normal might be insulting for somebody else. You have to know about this. You have to realize that you might risk a conflict simply by either shaking hands or not shaking hands or looking directly at somebody or coming too close to somebody. And finally, the last level of heterogeneity that I want to touch upon in this presentation is what is in our minds? So far, I've spoken about things that you see and hear, the behavior of a person, the language he uses, the country he comes from, she comes from. But a lot of those differences, again, at a very individual level, sometimes culturally determined, depending on where we come from, what group we belong to. There's a lot of things, no, 
our minds. So we don't speak out loud, but it also makes us so different from one to the other. So many, many different levels of heterogeneity that we all will meet, that we all have to deal with in a European Works Council. That we have to be aware of in order to be able to move on, to create something new. It starts with the nationalities. As I said, the European Union started with six countries. We are 27 today. The colours on this plan, these are more or less all the countries where you could have members from the European Works Council coming from. The colours have a certain meaning. Does anybody... Simple question, but to begin with, what are the yellow countries? The member states of the European Union. As I said, 27 member states today already. <coughs> Including, since six, seven years now, also Bulgaria, Romania, Baltic states, etc. 27 member states. If you have a European Works Council from a company like in the finance sector, or some really global multinationals <laughs> like Pfizer, Novartis, etc., who are present in practically every country, you could already have 27 different nationalities. Yellow countries? Then there's three countries in blue. Well, one which is, which is really blue, very obviously, Norway, Iceland, a bit blue, and Liechtenstein, your small neighbor. What group of countries do they belong to? European Economic Area. Yeah. These are three countries that have, on a voluntary basis actually, decided to integrate European legislation into their national legislation without therefore being a member state. In Norway there have been two different uh, surveys among the uh, among the population of Norway, whether or not they wanted to become a member state at two times, the population said, no way, we don't want to be a member, but on a political level it was decided to integrate the legislation anyhow. So we have three member states of the European Economic Area, plus 27 member states of the European Union. We have 30 potential countries where every European Works Council should look at whether or not there are activities, there is staff, in those countries, and you could have representatives. You could at least cover 30 countries. On top of that, there is a potential more. These are certainly covered by the directive. 30 countries covered by the directive. There's a few more that now I might add in. The other countries in red, Iceland, Croatia, Macedonia, Turkey. What group of countries is that? Future member states, officially recognized candidate member states. The European Commission, European Parliament has already decided these countries will, in some near or more distant future, become a full member of the European Union. These countries are now in the process of transposing all of the legislation of the European Union into their national legislation. So you could already think about integrating representatives from those countries also in your European Works Council. And there are several who have done so. There's even at local level, France, for instance, in the transposition of the European Works Council Directive in France, it is literally said that you could provide a 